Here we are on the King Air with the Pro Line. We're getting ready to start the aircraft. We test the uh, ESIS and then turn it on. And then we wait for the screen over here to come alive. The screen has come alive. We go master on. We see that we got the fuel that we requested. And then we look at this screen. We're going to be watching this screen while we start the engine. To start the right engine first, we go to ignition and engine start. This is all going to happen very quick. So we go on. We look for an N1 of at least 12. And then we move the condition lever to low idle. Now we are watching, waiting for our uh, N1 to get to at least 55%. For us to turn off the starter, we want to make sure we don't overheat the engine by going all the way to the red, which we're good. Turn off the starter. Condition lever to high idle. And generator on, reset and on. To check the current limiters, we see that we do have a load on the uh, number two generator. We push them both in, we see that our number two is talking to number one and then we release. Once we're below 40%, we can start number one. To start the number one engine, left engine to start to on. We're looking for at least 12%, condition to low idle. Once we're at least 55%, engine start off, generator on, avionic. Turn our vent blower on high, cabin to auto, bleeds to environmental off and aft blower on just because it's kind of hot right now. Okay, like I said, this is mostly a Collins video. So here we come down to the Collins FMS. So we go to position and knit. Our last spot we were at, copy that, brings it down here to the scratch pad, set position, and then we go to flight plan. We're in Lakeway, so we take the three-row mirror nine and we move it over to where we're at now. So that's where we're going, that's where we are. SJT is where we are going. The flight plan is going to be direct to Amuse and then direct to the San Angelo VOR and then direct to the San Angelo Airport. Execute that. Got a performance in it. We got zero passengers. I always put in 50 pounds of cargo just for backpack and the cooler. We got uh, 1,900 pounds of gas left on board. And we're going to be making this flight at 14,000. Oop, I put in 15. Try that again, 14,000. Execute that. During this time, we've taken our time and we've gotten the uh, emergency standby instruments aligned. If you taxi before those are aligned, that's bad. Lakeway Traffic King Air 187, Julia Pappas, back taxi runway 16. We'll be departing to the west, Lakeway. So now we're going to back taxi. On our way 16. Like I said, this is a uh, Collins video, so it's not going to show the run up or anything that we would normally do or do sometimes. I will set the speeds V1 to 95, VR of 100, V2 of 120, and V target of 110. Before we take off, engine auto, engine anti ice off. Auto feather to arm. Landing taxi lights on, strobes on, fuel vent heat on. That's your hot five and your stall warning and your pedo heats are coming on. Bleeds to open. We bring up our go around uh, bars, our V bar, our flight director. Lakeway Traffic King R 187. Juliet Pop is rolling on 16. We depart to the west, Lakeway. I do a static takeoff here. We're going to be runway heading up to 12,000. Power setting with the glass, you want to make sure that everything stays out of the amber and the red. I shoot for about 2200 uh, on the torque. There's 80 knots, cross check, everything's good. V1 rotate, positive rate, gear up, landing and taxi lights off. I know some people will say you turn those off too fast. I'll see where we go heading. Yaw dampener. 
at about 140. I'll do five and change. Back taxi I turn off the uh, landing lights right away just because my hand is right here by the uh, the gear up switch and the landing lights are up in the wheel at that point and I just assume have them off. Okay, now we're climbing out of Lakeway, just Number wait. 187 Julie Bobby, ready to contact four miles to the uh, southwest of the uh, Lakeway Airport, clear to the uh, San Angelo Airport via direct Amuse. Direct San Angelo, direct, climb and maintain 1-2000, expect 1-4000 as a final, and just verify leaving 5200. Clear to San Angelo via direct Amuse, direct San Angelo, direct, climb to 12000, expect 14 and 10, and we are out of 5700 feet right now for 187 Julie Papa. Okay, we've been okay. We've been given direct to Muse. Zero South eighteen eighty one. So we're gonna hit select direct. Select the nine next to a Muse. Six one five Hotel Romeo Houston. Execute. It's your twelve thousand seven hundred off of where And then you select now. Six one five Hotel Romeo. If that's you climbing out of one two thousand four hundred, stop your climb. Once you've done that, you come over here and make sure that what you selected is what you want. So FMS. Autopilot, flight level change. We're climbing up to 14,000 right now, and our active waypoint is Amuse. We are in TCAS mode. There's a few, a few different modes you can have on here. This is kind of the half, uh, half compass. You can have where you draw a map on there. I don't like that. Or you can have the full. Full HSI. This is kind of more the airline way. I like this. I like this uh, particular flight director versus the V bars. We do we do have the option of V bars, and on the co-pilot side, yeah, with the V bars are selected. But I like. Number six one five hotel room. Did you have nine bar flight plan on fire? Are you looking for flight following? Okay, we're level here at 14,000. This is not a very long flight, so I'm not going up very high. Uh, so we want to set our cruise power setting. Now, one thing we can do, we can get in the book and look at uh, all the different power settings. What they're going to tell us is you definitely want the ITT to be below 780, which is a little above right now. So first thing I'm going to do is bring the ITT below 780. That's what I've, when I've looked at all the books, that's kind of where they've, they've had me, at least below that. Make sure the torques match up. Now we're going to bring the prop, the prop levers down to 1,700 RPM. You can do 1,800, you can do 1,700. There's, there's books and charts for both, uh, both power settings. If uh, ITT is below 780 and the torque is still above the limit, you got to bring the torque back. Uh, that'll work. Uh, hopefully it'll pick up here in a second. One thing you will notice, this is our little inclinometer right here, and it's out of whack because I was climbing with some right rudder in there, and now I'm level. Uh, we're just going to put in the rudder trim. And there you go. We've just been given direct to the San Angelo Airport, so we're going to hit direct. KSJT. Execute. Nav. And again, we check that we're in FMS mode, and our active waypoint is San Angelo, and we're 118 miles away from there. 118 miles. We'll give a call, American 35. We have pretty much no wind because our ground speed and our true airspeed are pretty much the same. It's going to take us about 25 minutes to get there. Five hotel room at standby. Zero Papa, Roger. One thing people notice, we only have one radio uh, tuner. However, we do have two radios on board. This little one slash two button right here. If you want to go to, we're on COM one right now. If you want to go to COM two, we do like this, which we're going to San Angelo. So we know that the ATIS is 128.45. And when you want to select the other side, just hit that button there. And it, uh, the green is what is active. Now we'll go back to our number one radio, and we're active on 134.2, which is Houston Center. Our next frequency is going to be 125.35, which is uh, San Angelo Approach. Those frequencies are also going to be listed on the bottom of our PFD. We got 134.2 listed there. We got our squawk code, time, and our COM2. This above right here, I, I did have trouble figuring out what that was for. I mean, I knew what it was for. Uh, it's for the TCAS. I wanted to.
go down. Five zero pop right. Either have it normal or below. Zero zero. So here's how we do that. Houston center one two six point one. In this TCAS section, the button that says test slash out, just push that button, and you notice the above went away. I'm gonna push that button again. We get below. Push the button again. We get above and below. It's kind of looking up and down. Push it one more time. We're back to above, and then I'm going to push it one, one last time to be in normal mode. Notice our heading bug is a little off from when we were on a heading earlier. The center of the heading knob, push that, and it centers the heading bug. I'll demonstrate that from here. You just push the heading knob, and it's centered. And number five hotel Romeo. And when you're wanting to change your range on your map, you have one knob that'll control this map as well as the master map on the MFD. The knob here, the, the smaller knob, just turn it to the right. Alaska, four and notice four, can take your map gets bigger. You can just keep expanding it out all the way to 150. 300 is the outer American, ring. Uh, 2664 contact Austin approach. I like it around the 50 Good mode day. or 50 uh, mile zero. range. American 2664. So right here is the top of descent. Care. Good day, American 26. This is going to give us a normal descent right into San Angelo. Center sky was 59. We have right here 1410. That's the amount of fuel we're going to have on board when we land, and we're going to weigh about 10,000 pounds. Center climbing team level 230. Level 230. Sky 5995. One thing I like to do is uh, set up the VNAV. So to do that, we don't really have anything to go by because we're not doing an arrival or anything special like that in San Angelo. So San Angelo's elevation is 1,919 feet. So what I like to do is I give a little bit. So I just put in 2,000. I put in a slash, 2,000, and I stick it up here next to San Angelo on the right-hand side and execute. What that's going to do is give me a glide slope. Now, if I want to be perfectly sure of it, I go performance, VNAV setup, and I've got uh, 300, 0.74, 14,000, that's where I'm at. Flight path angle of 3 degrees, so I do know, and if I hit descent info, I know that uh, KSJT, 2000, from present position is a 2.1 degree glide slope, or 1,000 foot a minute. So how that translates, we can use the VNAV function. Now I'm just going to go ahead and select VNAV, however, because I have not changed the altitude, nothing will happen. But we will see that it says V out. It means it's going to be controlled by the, uh, by the FMS. Now if I were to change the altitude, now I will put it right back to 14,000. But if I were to change it, notice it gives me a path and gives me a glide slope. It tells me 2,000. The, the uh, Magenta 2,000 is my ultimate uh, final altitude. Now, I do want to go back to 14,000 because I don't want the airplane to descend. So, altitude, so if they give me a discretion to an altitude, I'll put that altitude in. And once the glide slope catches up, the aircraft will descend via. Cap 4233, roger. Okay, coming into San Angelo, our altimeter setting is 3004. I've set that on the barrel right here. One thing you will notice, if the co-pilot side is too far off, you will have a yellow line there. Consequently, that keeps me to always make sure and set the co-pilot side as well as the captain side. As long as they're both 3004 or within a few decimal points of it, it'll uh, read properly. And we do have info. If you were to want to change up your, uh, your nav mode, Press the nav button. Brings 30, up nav source. Contact Houston Center one. You can select VOR one. VOR two. Keep in mind when you do this, it's going to change you to roll mode. We're going to go back to uh, FMS, and then we'll reselect nav just to get back into uh, making sure we're navigating properly. Press the nav bearing button again. And that all goes away. To turn on the radar, select radar button. And with the same uh, select switch, you're going to select weather. That's all you got to do. The radar comes on. Now to change the tilt is going to be the bigger knob, the outer knob. And you'll see the reading here. 
changing where we're looking. There is no weather today in uh, Texas, so it's not a big deal. Turn that back off. We select radar, put it back into standby mode, and the radar turns off. Simple as that. One thing we want to do before we get to San Angelo, we want to put in our speeds. Hit the reference button. You notice we'll have two options here. Uh, V-Ref, which for our weight is about 100. And V-Target, I use 110. Some people use 105, I use 110. Uh, a King Air, just like, well, really most twins, is you do not fly at blue line all the way down the pipe. So it's 1489 contact. San it's just an unsafe fast speed. Don't do it. It's uh, it's just too fast. Yes, I know some people, I've seen comments before in my Baron video where people have said, you need to fly, you're supposed to fly blue line. Well, that is just absolutely incorrect. I'm an MEI. I do actually know what I'm talking about. Uh, the reason you don't fly blue line, the people, people say you need to fly blue line because that is the VYSE. However, if you're on an approach and you were to lose an engine, first of all, just go ahead and land. If landing is not an option, because for whatever reason you need to go around, you're going to give up a little bit of altitude, but you can pick up the speed really quick back to blue line, back to VYSE. But you don't want to be at that uh, when you come in for a landing because that's just too fast. You're going to float. you got a better chance of running off the end of the runway. So I know some schools teach that, but they're, they're just wrong. Take that for what it is. One thing that's kind of cool about this system, uh, we had this, uh, the FPA, Flight Roger. Path Angle. We had that in the uh, Embraer 170. Your, uh, that made steep I turns plan information together. to be a non-event, made them super easy, because all you do is keep that uh, circle on the horizon, no. and you know what, we'll you're holding altitude. Don't even have to look at the altimeter if you do it just right. The reason Number it's off to the right a little bit, we do have a little bit of a left uh, crosswind. Just a tiny bit pushes us to the right. So that's letting us know we're going off to the right. It could it could be way over here to the right or way over here to the left, and that would let us know we've got a stronger wind. Now I believe one of the last things I can show you here just on the basic instruments is this emergency uh, standby. The 3, 000, the so when you get to the ESIS, hit the M button, that's menu. If you want to set course, you're going to push in the knob, and then you can... Change the course, you'll notice the number is changing. That's for if you were having to do an ILS approach just using this instrument. Once you're ready to get out of there, hit the M button, hit the M button one more time, and you're out of that uh, function. To set the altimeter on the uh, ESIS, it's just, it's just this knob here. And same thing for setting the altimeter on the PFDs, it's the Barrow knob. And that'll set them. Number 7 Juliet Papa, to set and maintain 8,000. Set and maintain 8,000, 187 Juliet Papa. So, altitude knob. Damage at 850, to set and maintain 14,000. Now, he told me to do it now. Zero, zero, zero. So what I'm going to do, I leave it in, in V path. I mean, sorry, I leave it in V out. But I go ahead and select VS mode. And use this wheel to descend the aircraft. I just like to put in a 500 foot a minute descent. This little magenta circle so 50, 50, is letting me know exactly where I would need to descend at to hit San Angelo at 2,000 feet. Like I said, this is a Collins thing, but we are descending, so we might as well set our uh, our descent check, which is basically altimeter set. Oxygen is off. We never turned it on because we didn't go very high. And we're going to set our pressurization. San Angelo is right around 2,000, so set that in there. Okay, we're on with San Angelo approach. We've been given 4,000, and notice we are on the glide path, so we see a V path set up. This thing's pretty handy. You can put that in if you get told to cross an intersection at a certain time or a certain uh, altitude. Put that in, hit VNAV, airplane does it for you. It's, uh, it's a handy All thing. Right, we've been cleared to visual to runway 18. So I'm going to go into heading mode. Go ahead and give us a little bit of a turn to the, uh, just to make a a wider downwind. Corner of the tower, 1837 Juliet Papa, good day. Mathis Tower, King Air, 187 Juliet Papa, visual 18.
All right, the aircraft's leveling at 4,000, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the autopilot by manipulating the trim switch. Notice the autopilot's off. Okay, 187 Juliet Pop, man. Tire left page for 18140 down here, runway 18 clear to land. Left page for 18 18 clear to land, 187 Juliet Papa. So because I'm going to be going off of the, uh, the flight director, you go ahead and select flight director, which is up here on the autopilot uh, panel. Deselect that, goes away. If you deselect the flight director on the first officer side, all of your stuff goes away there. I like to go ahead and set my next altitude, which is 7,000, uh, for when I depart on Saturday. We're almost entering the class Delta airspace, so I'm going to go ahead and slow down because we know we need to be at 200 knots or less. We see the word approach coming up in the 200 knot range. That's for my approach flaps. Once we're below 200 knots, approach flaps coming in. Under 181 knots, we'll go gear down. Landing and taxi lights on. This is a newer King Air, so we don't have to turn the prop sync off ever. Well, I mean, in normal normal modes. The DN means down, so flaps go down. Full flaps go down to 157 knots. And we continue to slow down. Passing through blue line. Props are going to go forward. And we're at our target speed of 110 knots. The King Air is not super, super important that you're directly on. I mean, it's important that you're on speed, yes. However, it's easy to get the King Air stopped. Get into jets, you definitely need to be on speed. Every knot or two you go is more distance you're going to float. 500. 500 feet, I'm starting to turn final. And at 500 feet, I turn the yaw dampener off. 200. 200 feet, I got a little bit of a right crosswind. 100. You can't really see outside the aircraft because I'm wanting you to look at the instruments, but uh, I'm lining 50. up 1.8. 40. 30. Go fast, slow back. 10. Power comes to idle. And that, I just touched down right on the 1,000 foot markers on the center line. Here, so enjoy it, Papa. You can exit a taxiway echo and taxi to parking. It's uh, monitor ground point nine. We'll see you later. Echo to park, monitor ground point nine. Good day, seven Joe Papa. Exiting the runway, so flaps come up. Trim back to normal. Lights off, fuel vent off, pedo heat off, stall warning heat off. Auto ignition off, anti ice on, and engine anti ice on. And auto feather to off. Alrighty, we're taxiing here into Ranger Aviation in San Angelo, Texas. Shutdown on this aircraft is uh, pretty simple. Once uh, once I get parked here, we'll be able to accomplish this. Alright, we're stopped. I don't set the parking brake because you just got to undo it, but uh, avionics come off. Once the avionics are off, ESIS switch off. And both fuel cutoff switches off on the condition levers. Props to feather. And all your air conditioning systems off. And that is how you fly a King Air 200 with the Collins Proline system. Hope you enjoyed the ride.